All right, we just talked about um, the period of time from the Civil War to 1937 where um, the courts are interpreting that firms and corporations act as individuals and we're not going to regulate what they can do. We're not going to uh, deny them uh, their due process rights from the 14th Amendment. From 1937 on, remember the time period of time we're dealing with, with FDR being president, um, we've got uh, the uh, Great Depression going on, and so at this point we're gonna, the courts are gonna stop interpreting or um, or ruling things the state and federal government do to regulate uh, the economy. We're gonna let the um, legislature deal with that. We kinda talked about that in bureaucracy. Up until that point, um, the courts were pretty adamant that Congress had to be very, very specific and outline everything that the bureaucracy was going to do. And now we're going to let legisla the legislature determine how much power they're going to give to the federal bureau bureaucracy and allow them to regulate the economy um, as they need to. Um, and so at this point, um, we do not have from 1937 to 1974 uh, the courts overturning a single federal regulation um, that Congress established. The types of things from this point on that we see the courts really focusing on is laws that violate people's personal liberties. If it's an encroachment on freedom of speech, we're seeing um, them take a closer look at that. Um, some specific instances are when the government um, tries to hold up passports or not give passports to communists. Um, instances of them trying to revoke a person's citizenship because of their um, political beliefs, uh, withholding people's mail, restricting gover government benefits, and things like that. Um, specifically looking at FDR and the New Deal, um, a majority of the court, um, the Supreme Court, really opposed the welfare state and all of these different agencies that FDR was trying to get pushed through to get the economy started again. Um, so they oppose the federal, the welfare state and the federal regulations based on these broad grants of discretionary authority that um, Congress was giving to these agencies, and we've already talked about that. You know, Congress was not able to be very specific. They're giving them very, very broad discretionary authority, these bureau bureaucratic agencies. Um, the courts opposed this, and all of this was the type of legislation that FDR once again was trying to get pushed through. Um, in his New Deal. So in FDR's first term, he does not get to appoint any of his justices. Um, his second term, 1936, he is overwhelmingly reelected based on his stance and his policies on trying to uh, fix a lot of problems that were caused during this period of time. Um, FDR's solution to the fact that he could not or had not been able to appoint any new justices because no one had resigned or died was that he wanted to be able to appoint one new justice for every one of the justices over 70 who refused to retire um, up to a total of 15. So there were six members of the nine at that time who met that standard. So if he was able to appoint six more justices, um, he would have his uh, four, or excuse me, his 15, um, which would give him a majority and he'd be able to get through um, his pieces of legislation without worried about them being uh, considered unconstitutional. Um, this is a real scary proposition for the courts. Um, so Justice Owen Robert switched. So all of the decisions before were 5-4 ruling against FDR, but when Owen switches his vote, becomes that swing vote, um, the decisions start working out in FDR's favor uh, five to four. So it's still very, very close, but once again, um, the court is responding to the fact that this man won big in these elections, and this is what the people want. And I just thought it was interesting, um, the phrase switch in time uh, that saved nine. There's a famous stitch in time, so they kind of a play on that. But he did end up filling seven seats um, during his four-term uh, period that he was in office.